In southwestern Madagascar, the shores of the Indian Ocean are home to the Vez, a nomadic sea people. A Vez legend tells of a boatman who was dragged to the bottom of the abyss by a horrible beast. Just when he thought all was lost, a mysterious creature, the guitar shark, surged up in front of him and said, don't be afraid. We are both children of the sea. I mean you no harm. Only tell your brothers that they can fish for us, but they must not exterminate us. Then the shark carried the man to dry land. Ever since, the Vez consider fishing for sharks a prestigious activity, which strengthens the alliance between man and animal. This wild coast, covered with immense white dunes, is Vez country. Jean-Louis is one of the coast's greatest shark fishermen. Several times a year, he leaves his village of Tiandam with his wife and his two boatmen to fish up north at Bayangoro. After a two-day trip, the men reach their destination. Beangolo is a fisherman's camp. The Vez chose this spot because it faces the Sharks Pass. A pass is an opening in the coral reef which lines the coast. It's the only spot for casting nets. Along with their pirogues, these shark nets are the Vez's most precious possession. This camp contains many families of fishermen from neighboring villages. The huts of one family form a semicircle. In the center, the women prepare the meals. The men are glad to be together again. They haven't seen each other for a long time. Everyone is getting ready to spend two long months together. Early morning, Jean-Louis, Led, and Bada get ready to leave to raise the shark net they spread the previous day. The Vez call their sail Lai, which means escape. Centuries ago, setting sail often enabled them to preserve their freedom. 
they would flee the tribes from the center of the Big Island, who had invaded the coast to capture and enslave the Vez. arid region of Madagascar, it only rains four days a year. Water is very precious, and while the men fish, the women walk for an hour over the dunes every day to reach a three-meter deep well from which they draw slightly salty water. Raising the shark net requires great courage. The men are up against the pass's roll, where two to three meter high breakers can sink a pirogue without warning. Sometimes fishermen lose their nets because of the powerful currents. This time the net hasn't drifted too far. Lead manages to free it from a mass of coral. The net is empty, but the men refuse to give up. Fishing for sharks requires perseverance. No one in the village has caught a shark for a month. Without wasting any time, they will immediately spread their nets further on in the pass. This technique of shark fishing is simple. The Vez spread their nets, which are held down at the bottom by two heavy stones and kept afloat by two buoys. Fish attached to the mesh are used for bait. Diliemo, an old and wise keeper of Vez tradition, lives a short distance from the camp. He lives as his ancestors did, in a tent made of the sail and the mast of his pirogue, a technique the Vez still use today when they travel along the coast. Jean-Louis has come to get Diliemo's advice. <laughs> Mm. Uh, 
Mi This morning, on the advice of Dilemo, Jean-Louis repairs his pirogue. Vez pirogues are fragile and only last three or four years. To cock them, they heat up euphorbia resin, which they collect from the cypresses that grow behind the dunes. The pirogues are carved from the trunk of a very tender tree, the farafatse, which only grows in Madagascar. Since the boats fill up with water very quickly, the men have to pull them onto the beach to dry out every evening. Once the euphorbia resin boils, it turns into latex, which is applied like tar to waterproof the pirogue. Vez means paddler. The paddle is the last resort for fishermen when their sail is torn or when their mast breaks. It also serves as a rudder. Most of the time, fishermen row around the lagoon. Their daily lives consist of fishing on the coral reef a kilometer off the coast in relatively shallow water in order to feed their families and to catch fish to be used as bait for shark fishing. Bada spreads a small nylon net at the edge of the reef to catch small fish, while Jean-Louis beats the water to drive down the catch. Maria. Then, Led and Bada go after the fish in their hiding places, openings in the coral reef. The men have a keen eye. They can spot fish when there seems to be none around. Some fish on the reef have stinging poisonous needles on their dorsal fins. Jean-Louis handles them with great care. In the past, the Vez didn't have to go to the other side of the coral reef. The reef itself was enough for them. They would catch octopus and shellfish at low tide. Although today, they spread their shark nets out on the high sea, Octopus, very abundant in the lagoon, is still their basic food.
Although the Vez used the net fishing technique, a throwback to colonial days, traditional spear fishing is still the most effective. Jean-Louis and his men are happy. Although the shark net is still hopelessly empty, the reef has not betrayed them. They have caught enough fish to feed their families. To preserve their catch, they dry the fish in the sun. To cook them, the women need only plunge them into the water to rehydrate them. <laughs> In spite of the dinner his wife has prepared, Jean-Louis is still worried about not having found any sharks. Old Guillermo's words were not completely reassuring. The south wind is blowing, the wind that blows to announce the death of a bear. Time is running out. Soon the sea will be too rough. Only a few hours left to raise the nets in the pass. The spirit of the guitar shark has not abandoned them. This time the catch is formidable. The shark has been struggling all night long. He's completely tangled in the net. The men discover a hammer shark at least three meters long and weighing more than 200 kilograms. Lifting it into the pirogue is no mean feat.
When the fishermen take a shark out of the water, it is already dead of suffocation, since sharks have to move to oxygenate their gills. Today's catch was even more timely, since the storm predicted will immobilize the men for several days. They've got to get back to Bayangolo before the winds get too violent. Jean-Louis and Bada fold their sails in the form of a bat to keep them from tearing and to prevent the mast from breaking. For the village, the catch is a great event. It's been months since the men have caught such a beast. They set the shark down in the center of the camp, where it can be shared by all the families. Every part of the body is eaten. What is not consumed immediately will be salted to be eaten later. The fins of the shark are the most valuable part of the animal. In the past, the Vez didn't bother with the fins, but in recent years, Chinese collectors have been offering high prices for them. They belong to Jean-Louis, since it's his bureau. He'll sell them in the city and buy a sail to replace the one he tore. A cotton sail, this symbol of freedom that the Vez call the wings of the sea. <laughs> 